All right. Hi there, guys. Welcome to Boxing Deep Dive. I'm Lyndon Hosking. Just like to welcome in our uh, co-host for tonight. Uh, we've got uh, Tazzy Brown. How are you, Tazzy? Good, Lyndon. Good to be back, mate. Yeah, good to have you back, mate. We've got uh, Peter Maniartis. How are you, Pete? Great to be on the show, Lyndon. Good stuff, mate. And as always, uh, the, the Walking in bo Boxing Encyclopedia, Mike Altamura. How are you going there, mate? Hopefully you guys won't make me too angry this week. Yeah, I know. We we did make you angry the last couple of weeks. I Poor old Harry Greb. I don't think you're ever going to let us live that down. So. Oh, no. Poor old Greb, mate. Listen, mate, we're, we're having a chat during the week, Mike. We know that you were very upset with the Benny Leonard that we didn't, you know, the summers didn't have him in there, mate. And, and I guess um, I hope that you got over it and I hope that you're ready for a new, fresh segment, Mike, because I know that, You've been playing on your mind a lot, the Benny Leonard and Greb not being in some of the, the <laughs> Hey, top we teams. do love them fighters, mate. But, um, but uh, yeah, if, if you haven't seen the episodes, last week was the top 10 overall pound-for-pound -pound fighters of all time. Before that, last week, uh, two weeks ago, was the all-time Australian uh, top 10, and it was uh, plenty of debates. So if you haven't seen them, check them out on YouTube. They're both there at Boxing Deep Dive channel. And tonight is the top 10 heavyweights of all time. So this will be our last top 10 for a little bit. We're going to change the format a little bit from next week. We'll have a bit more news on that. But tonight, the top 10 heavyweights of all time. So we're going to kick it off tonight with uh, Tazzy, followed by Pete, and then Michael coming third. And I'll uh, try and uh, get it right in the fourth position um, tonight after my, my effort last week. So, so Tazzy, what we'll do, mate, we'll bring up the slides. We'll have some vision. You can explain yep. a little bit about... Uh, why, uh, why a little bit about the fighters and why you've chosen them, and uh, we'll kick it off with uh, number ten. Let's get into it. I'm Mike Tyson. Um, probably going to cop a lot of flack. Look, it could have been the top of all time. I mean, he, um, you know, youngest heavyweight world champion, unified the belts, um, beating Tony Tucker, Burbick. Best win was probably over Spinks and old Larry Holmes on the comeback. Wins over Toro Biggs and Razor Ruddick. But, I mean, um, you know, he was instructable at his best in a poor era. Um, but losses to Holyfield and Lewis. Um, and then later on, you know, quitting, you know, in his last fight. Um, I believe that, I don't know, when the going got tough, Mike sort of, you know, he, he didn't really live up to it. I mean, look, he could have been the best of all time, given what he was like. But... He hasn't got the names of the resume. Like, you know, the guys that he that he beat is a pretty much, um, you know, the guys he lost to were, were the legit ones, Holyfield and Lewis. So having not having them marquee wins over a real big Hall of Famer, um, you know, besides Holmes, who was come off the comeback. But, look, could have been the best ever, but I, I feel like he just makes my top ten. All right, mate, number nine. Evander, the real deal, Holyfield, obviously, wins over Tyson, the rematch over Big Daddy Bo, um, you know, he rematched Michael Moore and beat him. Um, Buster Douglas, Cooper, Hazin Ruckman. Um, you know, he beat Foreman and Holmes on the comeback, but they weren't sort of, you know, as well. Obviously past their best, but Foreman won the world title after that, so that sort of wasn't as bad for him. But the win's over Tyson and, and the win over Bo. I mean, the comeback... Like I rate Big Daddy Bo big time, and Holyfield lost in a war in the first fight, one of the greatest heavyweight fights of all time. It, you know, the first fight with Lewis obviously got the draw, you know, controversial, but he come back in the second fight, mate. It wasn't that much in it, in my opinion. Holyfield really was a, a blown up cruiserweight, um, and yeah, mate, he just fought all the big guys in his era. True legend. That's why he he, he finished ahead of Tyson because he beat Tyson twice and. And I think he's just a bigger, had a bigger heart than Tyson. So he beats him and mate, comes in number nine. Yep. No, hard to uh, argue with that, mate. Number eight. Smoking Joe Fraser were obviously the biggest winners over Muhammad Ali, obviously. And um, even the next two fights after that and the Thriller Manila, the third one was a war of nutrition. I reckon Ali might have not come out for the last you know, round, but um, Fraser didn't. So, I mean, you know, what a great fighter. Hey, Jimmy Ellis, Bob Foster, um, you know, Quarry, Bonavita, Chavalo, Doug Jones, you know, massive left hook, um, you know, one of the, you know, he was the the man after Ali and the first person to beat Muhammad. But, um, you know, 
would have liked to have him higher, but um, I, f- I find him um, where I've got him there at number eight. Smoking Joe Fraser. All right, mate. Number seven. Lenny Slaughter. Well, you know, Marquee wins. Got the win over Holyfield um, after the draw. Um, you know, he beat Tyson. Obviously, Tyson was at his best, mate, but he obviously he went, he went away with Tyson on his resume. Tough fight, Ray Mercer. Very tough fight, but he won that fight. Tommy Morrison, um, you know, obviously the win over Klitschko, even though it was, you know, through the cuts, controversial. But, I mean, think about Lewis. He, um, everyone that beat him, he, he got him in the rematch. He beat Ruckman and he beat um, McCall. So, I mean, you know, he, he retired with only the three losses, revenge both losses. I think he can hold up in any era. His boxing ability, he's a big man. He had good power, Olympic gold medalist. Um yeah, Lewis is one of the modern day greats and you know, the last great heavyweight besides what we have now, Fury and Joshua are good and wilder, but I mean Lewis is probably the last great heavyweight. All right, mate, number six. Jack Johnson, the first um African American to be heavyweight champion of the world. The fight of the century versus James James Jeffries. Um what a fight that was. Jeffries come out of a retirement to show that no white man no black man can beat a white man, but Johnson stopped him in a great win. Beat Bob Fitzsimmons, Tommy Burns as well, Sam Langford, Frankie Childs, um, Joe Jennett, Joey Jennett, and Sam Mc- McVeigh. He was the um, the African American champion, or they called it, you know, the the I think they called it the African American title, black or the black you know man's title, Negro title for years, which there wasn't that a fight for the world title, but he chased Tommy Burns down to Australia, believe it or not. And um, won the heavyweight title, held it for many, many years, mate. So, um, the first African American heavyweight champion of the world, and um, what a great legend, you know, he was just a beast of a man with uh, many title defenses. He reigned for quite a while. All right, mate, number five. Big George Foreman, mate. You know, what, what a devastating punch, Olympic gold medalist. Destroyed Joe Fraser twice. Destroyed Ken Norton, and that's why everyone thought that um, he'd beat Ali because of the way he destructed Norton and Fraser, who both give Ali hell of fights. But Foreman was a machine. His fight with Ron Lyle um, was a you know amazing fight, a war. They both knocked each other down many times. Um, you know he beat Chavallo and come back and become the oldest heavyweight champion ever by um, knocking out Michael Mora. So I mean, what can you say about Big George Foreman, mate? What a beast and. Um, in his prime, I think he beats Tyson, he beats Holyfield. I think they were too small. I think they would have been like Joe Fraser versus Foreman with his big uppercuts and hooks. He would have caught them guys. So Foreman, um, yeah, that's where I got him on my on my top ten. He deserves it. Which moves us on to number four. Larry Holmes, mate. What can you say about him? One of the great left jabs in the business. Defended again 19 times. Um, you know, obviously Muhammad Ali was, you know, that's fight should never have happened, but he he uh, took the, you know, he, he beat Ali um, and uh, then he went on to a great reign for many, many years, mate. He was legit, you know, the fight of the the fight of the, the decade versus Cooney was a great fight. Um, he beat Ken Norton. Tim Witherspoon, who I really rate as well as a modern-day heavyweight, he beat Tim Witherspoon. An amazing amount of punches. Um Ernie Shavers, Mike Weaver, um, you know, the Eastern Assassin, you know, just a beautiful boxer and um, doesn't get the credit he deserves, um, but he has so many defences in the title and was probably most ripped off against Michael Spinks. He would have broke Marciano's record. So come back years later and still held his own with the distance against uh, Holyfield and and he beat Ray Mercer. He's the first person to beat Ray Mercer, so uh, he still could fight a bit. Oh, I know that, um, you know, we say the Tyson fight, you know, he, come, he was out of retirement for that, but then years later he beats Mercer in that. But, I mean, I just think that um, if he had a warm-up for Tyson, it might have been a bit better. But, um, yeah, Larry Hines, mate, he's a, arguably one of the greatest. Hmm. No, I hear you, mate. We've seen we've lost um, Mike there, but we'll get him back. Uh, I'll get him back. All right, which moves us to number three. Well, this is going to be... I know this is going to be a bit of the one. So Sonny Liston, in my opinion, could have beat anyone of these day. He beat Ed Sanders, who went on the win Olympic gold medal. That was in the amateurs. And then he, um, mate, he beat Cleveland Williams twice, Zora Foley. He destroyed Floyd Patterson. 
the thing about listen, this is my argument with listen, which I know we're going to discuss later. It's not so much what he did do. I was just, I know what he could have done. I mean, it's, he, he was just, he could box. He had a massive left, a great long left jab. He was a fearsome puncher. But unfortunately, the mafia were around back then and he was involved with them and he used to bash police and he wasn't wanted to be champion. The Ali fights, especially the second one, well, the second one was obviously, you know, he definitely took a dive and and the mafia later on killed him. You know? um, so I think um, Liston, even though, he, and don't forget, after he lost to Ali, he went on a bloody massive win streak for, for, for many years and uh, knocked out Chuck Wetner. Um, Liston was just a beast and I... Um, I think we didn't see the best of him, but in my opinion, he can beat anyone. Too big for Joe Laws, too big for Tyson, too big for Holyfield. Um, in my opinion, that's why I've got him there. Not because of what, exactly what he done, but I just think if you match him up again, he matches up against everyone. And um, we'll talk about that later. But yeah, I'm I know sure. you're probably going to give me. I'm a bit sure of fun we will. One, anyway. <laughs> Number two. Beautiful. Brilliant. The Brown Bomber. What can we say? We spoke about him last week. He reigned at world champion. From 1937 to 1949, 25 defences, um, you know, just, yeah, it, we, he done more than fight, mate. He, you know, he, he pretty much fought you know, World War Two versus Schmeling, got the rematch and, and won that in style. But, you know, Billy Conn, Jez Joe Walcott, Jack, Jack Sharkey, Max Bear, Palmer Canero, and um, just longevity. He was champion for a long time. If he didn't retire, well, if he stayed retired, he goes down only the one loss, which he revenged, and, and like all those defences for years. So he came back and lost to Ezra Charles and Marciano, past his best. But, you know, as I said, until Joe Lewis retired, he was the king of the heavens in boxing. And um, that's why I've got him number two, the Brown Bomber. Good stuff, mate, which brings us to number one. Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, what can we say? Won the, listen, won the title off Liston. Uh, you know, the Wars of Smoke and Joe. Won two out of the three with Phil and Manila. Beat Ken Norton. Cleveland Williams, I think, um, you know, one of the best I've ever seen, Ali. Uh, wins against Henry Cooper. You know, Bob Foster. Revenge against Leon Spinks after he he, uh, he lost to Leon and come back. Like I said last week, before the war, nobody beats Ali. Mm. Um, you know, I just think he's too quick for Joe. Too good for Tyson. Too good for all them guys. I mean, you don't t- you don't touch Ali. Fraser wouldn't have beat him, I don't think. But the three years off and the and the you know the the non activity hurt him. Um, the first person to win three heavyweight world titles, he's just yeah the greatest. That's why I got him number one. Good stuff, mate. Well, this is your top ten. You want to give us a quick run rundown? So I am Mike Tyson number ten. Look, as I said, probably could have been one of the greatest of all time. But, um, you know, it didn't really live up to it when it mattered most. Vanna Holyfield, mate, legend warrior, um, you know, held plenty of defences and he regained it against Big Daddy Bo. He fought big guys like Lewis, you know, he beat Tyson. Joe Fraser, number eight, smoking Joe, as we said, you know, first man to beat Ali and, you know, plenty of defences. He's a great champion, Lennox Lewis. The only two guys that beat him, he beat them both, and, you know, and, um, yeah, you know, he's just a, a great modern day heavyweight, Jack Johnson. First African American to be heavyweight world champion, just an absolute all round legend, and, and won the fight of the century. George Foreman, well, big George, like I said, deserves to be there, mate. Larry Holmes, so many defenses. Era after Ali, he um, probably wasn't you know respected enough by by everyone, but you know what a great great fighter. Listen, he's the wild card, the bad man that Tyson and Foreman looked up to. He makes Tyson look like a bloody a club scout. A girl guide. He was a bad, true gangster, but what a great fighter. Joe Lewis, Brown Bomber, changed boxing, and Muhammad Ali, the greatest of all time. Good stuff, mate. Well, that brings us uh, to Peter. So um, you want to grab us, uh, grab your pen and pad there, mate, and we'll get ready to go, and we'll start with number 10. Okay, number 10, Lennox Lewis, two-time lineal champion, gold medalist in Seoul, 44 belts. I think he's his wins over Holyfield, David Tua, Mike Tyson, Vitaly Klitschko. Sows it in for me in 10. I mean, he had some fights where he didn't train properly and he lost the guys he shouldn't have lost, but he also avenged the rematches. So for mine, he comes in at 10. All right, mate. Number nine. Nine, Sonny Liston. I mean, he knocked out 
Floyd Patterson two times in the first round, lost to Muhammad Ali, retired the first time and lost in the first time. I mean, look, he was around when there was no real heavyweights around that were any killers. So he was in the soft era, very similar to Mike Tyson's era, where there was no real killers. And when he did face someone that was there to be beat, like a, Muhammad, a young Muhammad Ali, he just couldn't do it. And um, mm. he basically defeated guys that, you know, I thought they were okay, but they weren't ever going to be great. So, but he still comes in at nine because he was around, you have to beat who's in front of you. And he did that and he did that constructively. And he was a bit of a beast and he was a bad man. And uh, he was a forgotten hero. So for mine, he comes in at nine. Speaking of beast, number eight. Yes, yeah, Smoke and Joe Frazier defeated Muhammad Ali in the fight of the century. What can you say about Smoke and Joe? That was a massive victory. Um, broke Ali's jaw, defeated Joe Bugner, Jerry Query. Um, he was blasted out by George Foreman, but that's you know that's no real disgrace. He won a gold medal in 64 in Tokyo and uh, had probably one of the most devastating left hooks of all time. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, number seven. Seven, Jack Dempsey. What can you say about Jack Dempsey? 53 wins, six losses for Jesse Willard. Louis Angel Firipo, Tommy Gibbons. He lost to Gene Tunney, and uh, that, that was a 14-second count. Um, but it was what it was, and it was in front of 120,000 people. And um, you just go into his fights. Some of the fights are 45 rounds and stuff like that. So... Mm -hmm. um, I think he lost in the 26th round of, of a 45 round fight. So um, Jack Dempsey for me, a real fighter right down to his boot laces. And um, he used to get the job done. If you wanted anyone fighting for your life, it'd be Jack. Yeah, that's for sure. That was either Manasseh Mawla, I think was his name, wasn't it? Mm, um, yeah. All right, number six. Brooklyn blockbuster, undefeated, probably similar to Floyd Mayweather, you know, having that undefeated record. It's hard to uh, to knock him, but he knocked out Jersey, Jersey Joe Rawcott as a uh, Charles Archie Moore, and of course he knocked out a, a washed up Joe Lewis. So for mine, he, he you know he, he it wasn't a massive strong era, but he beat everyone in front of him, and he was beating fighters when they were either coming to the end of their careers. But you can't knock anyone for doing that because it's not his fault, and he you know forty nine. And zip forty three KOs for mine. He has to go in at six. And someone that's been intertwined with uh, Rocky for a long time is your number five, Larry Holmes. What can we say about Larry? Probably the best left jab in boxing. Defeated a washed up Muhammad Ali, but it was Muhammad Ali's sparring partner. He used to really go well in sparring with Muhammad Ali. Obviously, we he saw his fights with Jerry Cooney, Tim Witherspoon, split decision, defeated. Probably the hardest hitting heavyweight of all time, and Ernie Shavers twice. Uh, made 19 title defences. The good thing about Larry Holmes, he was so tough. A lot of times he'd get hurt, and he was one of the best guys to tie a guy up when he got hurt. If any fighter wants to see someone that gets hurt and, and have to tie them up, that's a person you need to watch. Um, so Larry Holmes was the best at that, and. You know, sometimes you've got to tell fighters, you know, you're going to get hurt and you're going to need to tie tie fighters up. And some, some trainers don't like saying that to a fighter. They think it's negative, but it's not negative. It's just knowing that one day that will happen and you will need to do that to survive the fight. So Larry, for mine, was one of the survivors. Great left jab and deserves to be in at five. Number four. George Foreman, massive puncher. 76 wins, gold medalist in the 68 Olympics, defeated Joe Frazier, twice Ken Norton, um, KO Michael Moore to be the oldest heavyweight champion of all time at 45. The Rumble in the Jungle, Muhammad Ali just made it even more legendary. Um, no one beats Ali when Ali switched on like that. So, And especially being in, in the middle of the jungle for so long. Um, so he still comes in at number four and he was he was just a beast a big monster yeah that's for sure he's very intimidating uh number three jack johnson what what can you say about jack i mean 17 title defenses defeated tommy burns jesse willard lost to jesse willard in 26 rounds that fight was scheduled for 45 rounds 
Al Clothman, Stanley Kitchell, James Jeffries. They used to be massive crowds back then. And mm. um, being a coloured Friday, you know, it was, it was very hard back then. But uh, a great story about Jack Johnson. He used to have a nice sports car and he'd speed it along and policemen stopped him and said that'll be a fine of whatever it was back then, two pounds. And he gave the policeman four pounds and the policeman said, why are you doing that? Because I'll, he said, I'll be speeding on the way back as well. I might as well give you the money. <laughs> so that's Jack, Jack Johnson. <laughs> Got pardoned by Donald Trump as well for dating a white lady. So right. um, just what, one, of the, one of the greats, not of boxing, just of life. Mm. So Jack Johnson for mine. Uh, number two. Joe Lutz, a brown bomber, 25 total defences. What more can we say about Joey? You know, his victories over Max Smelling, his historical fights. He just had everything a fighter needed. Big heart, beautiful combinations, and uh, a fighter's fighter. So for mine, there was no Muhammad Ali. You know, it, it'd have to be... And a lot of people think that Joe Lewis was the greatest of all time, but for mine, no. Uh, I, I, I've got him in at number two. Which brings us to your number one heavyweight of all time. No surprise, Clashes Clay Muhammad Ali exposed a lot of fighters, exposed George Foreman in the rumble in the jungle. I mean, no one could have thought he could take the punishment he did against the ropes. Then that came the famous catch cry, rope a dope. Mm. Everything about boxing is Muhammad Ali and all the famous cries, the thriller in Manila, the rumble in the jungle, the fight of the set. It all leads back to Muhammad Ali. He was the greatest and... You know, what he did to Sonny Liston, I mean, that, that, that he just took his heart away. Liston quit after the first fight in the sixth round. Said Ali had razor on his gloves, there was excuses, there was everything. But the true fact was, someone like Sonny Liston had never seen anyone like Muhammad Ali. And none of us had ever seen anyone like Muhammad. You could see the right hand coming back and just slamming the right hand in the first fight and taking him out in the first round. Sledge and right hand. And I don't think Liston's seen that power and speed, and that's why he's the greatest Muhammad Ali for mine. Well, there's your top 10 there, mate. Just a quick run-through of uh, from 1 to 10. Lennox Lewis, what can we say? Chess player, very hard to beat. Sonny Liston, a beast, bit of a bully. Defeated who he had to defeat. Uh, ran in the clashes clay. Exposed him a little during that time. Joe Frazier, best left hook in boxing. Jack Dempsey. Fighter to his bootlaces. You, if you wanted anyone to fight for your life, it would be Jack. Rocky Marciano, undefeated, a legend, loved, and, um, you know, fought in an era maybe where there was no massive killers, but he beat who he had to beat. Larry Haynes, best left jab in boxing. George Foreman, a beast, oldest heavyweight champion of all time. Jack Johnson, made it all his own, lived the way he wanted to live. You know, there was no rules applied to Jack, and, uh, you know, just a panther. Joe Lewis, the Brown Bomber, made history by having that fight with uh, Jack Dempsey to change the world back then. When when um, when Max sorry Max Smelling when Max Smelling was under the Hitler regime and Muhammad Ali, the greatest of all time. Yep, excellent list, mate. Very hard to argue with that. Although I'm sure that Mike will um, will have something to to say about that, Mike. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll go to you now and we'll start at number 10. Yeah, so number 10 is Mike oh, can we hear you, Mike? I'm not sure we can hear you there. Okay. You might need to adjust your volume there, I reckon, mate. You're a little bit low. Give it a try there, Mike. Is that better now? We might um, come back to Mike there, having a bit of a drama with his um, volume there. Yeah, let's roll on to yours and then I'll come back. Yeah. We can saw it. We can saw you here. Can you guys hear Mike? I, I can't. I can hear him, but it's a little on the low side. Yeah, if you can turn your volume up a bit, mate, from, from your end, that'd be great. I'll see. You're saying it's a tight leather. No. We might, uh, might have to come back to you, Mike. I will um, 
I will jump in the hot seat. So we'll get Mike back. I'll start with mine, and uh, hopefully we can get we'll get Mike back. He's um, what is it? Got to get off the? Is it the dodo internet? Is that what's? What the hell is everyone that drops out to always? I, the think, dodo it's, I think it's I think it's the dodo. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna. Well, I'm gonna kick it off because I actually had uh, Mike Tyson at number uh, ten as well. Um, oh. Youngest heavyweight champion of all time, obviously with that knockout of uh, Trevor Burbick. Uh, unified the title, had nine defences. Uh, ended up losing to Buster Douglas in 1990. Um, I think we missed out on the best years of his uh, career. A bit like Muhammad Ali, actually, between 92 and 94 when he was uh, in prison. Regained the title in 90, or a version of the title in, uh, in 96 against uh, Frank Bruno. Uh, lost the title to Evander Holyfield in 96. Had the epic fight to Lennox Lewis and retired in 2005 uh, after the loss to Kevin McBride. But just uh, the you know, um, no excuse or no uh, coincidence that they called him the baddest man on the planet because he was such a great fighter to, uh, to watch in his time. Uh, number nine, I've gone for Smoke and Joe Fraser. 32-4-1 with 27 uh, KOs. Um, we all remember the fights, obviously, with Muhammad Ali, but an Olympic gold medalist, won the title in 1970, uh, had the defence against Ali, lost the title to George Foreman in uh, 1973 by a second-round knockout, uh, lost return fights to Ali and Foreman, but had some great wins over Jerry Quarry, Joe Bugner, Bob Foster, and ended up retiring in uh, 1981. That brings me to number eight, the real deal, Evander Holyfield, 44-10-2, uh, Olympic bronze medalist. If you remember, he got he got uh, disqualified at the Olympic uh, Games in '84. Unified the world cruiserweight title in 1988. Won the heavyweight title with a third round knockout of Buster Douglas in 1990. Uh, ultimately lost the title to Riddick Bow in '92, but regained it in '93. Lost it to Michael Moore in '94. Regained the version of it in '94 against '96 uh, against uh, Tyson. Had the draw and lost against Lennox Lewis, but. An amazing, amazing fighter. Just one of the most durable fighters ever to lace on a glove, I think. And every fight seemed to be a war. He won a WBA title uh, in 2000 with over John Ruiz and actually lost the title after that to him. But um, just a, a you know a warrior in there. And and um, as I said, every fight he had seemed to be a war. But Jizzy had some some great wins as well. So uh, number seven. I've gone with Lennox Lewis. Uh, pretty close call between Lewis and uh, Holyfield. Um, Lewis, uh, Olympic gold medalist, uh, actually was given the WBC title in 92, lost it in um, 94 to Oliver McCall, regained it in 97, uh, lost it again to Hasim Raham in 2001 and uh, won it back in the same year and held it to 2004. 15-2-1 with 10 KOs in world title fights and epic fights with Tyson, Holyfield, Ray Mercer, Tucker, Tommy Morrison, Klitschko, you name it. He fought them all. So uh, a great, great fighter was... Lennox Lewis. Uh, number six, I've gone for the Manasseh Mauler, Jack Dempsey, 53 and 6, 43 uh, KOs. Um, a little bit hard with the, the footage situation of uh, Jack Dempsey, but just an absolute legend of the sport. Won the title in 1919 with a third round knockout of Jess Willard. Fought in the first five $1 million gates, did Jack Dempsey. Had four defences, lost the title to Gene Tony in 26, and we all know he, he come very close to retaining it against Tony in the, in the long count, but um, very, very revered as, um, as one of the, the greatest heavyweights of all time. Uh, which moves us to number five, uh, Jack Johnson, 54 and 11, as been mentioned before, first African-American to win uh, the world title. Uh, Tommy Burns, KO 14 in Sydney on Boxing Day 1908, lost the title to Jess Willard with a, in the 26th round, if you can believe that in 1915 and ended up with his um, finish his fight it was very hard to get another crack at the title after that uh, and just when it finished his career with fights in mexico canada cuba and other countries and um and uh, retired in 1931. number four we go to big george foreman 76 and five um again what you guys have said about him what more can you say another olympic gold medalist um Won the title, the second round knockout of Smoke and Joe Fraser in 73. Uh, interesting study. Actually fought five fighters in the one night once just to prove how tough he was. Um, uh, lost the title, to obviously, to Ali 
uh, retired um, in the 60, uh, sorry, 75, I think it was, uh, 77, I think it was. Pete, if you can correct me there, came back in 87 and ended up winning the title with a 10th no uh, round knockout of Michael Mora in 1994 at age 45, if you can believe that. The oldest heavyweight champion in history. Number three, I went for the Eastern Assassin, Larry Holmes, 69 and 6 with 44 uh, KOs. Uh, a bit like George Foreman, actually, he sort of had two careers. I uh, thought he was all, all gone. Um, his career was dead and buried, but re, re, uh, invented himself. Had the second longest reign in history of seven years. Uh, 19 defences in total, 20 and 0 and 14 KOs before he lost the title to Michael Spinks. And literally cleaned out the entire division around him. You name the fighter in that the elite fighter in the heavyweight division in his time, and he he fought them and beat them. So he uh, thought he was gone after he lost the rematch to Spinks, and he got wiped out by Tyson. That came back and ended up having some ep epic fights against Mercer and Holyfield, and uh, just a, a true legend of the sport. And I think Tazzy said before, very very underrated uh, in the heavyweight division, but just an uh, an absolute champion and an ap and a chin of granite. He got knocked down a few times but always got up and um, was just a magnificent fighter. Number two, no surprise here, Joe Lewis, 66 and three with 52 KOs. Uh, again, you guys have been over most of his uh, career so far. 27 and one in world title fights with 23 KOs. Ring Magazine Fighter of the Year in 1936, 38, 39 and 41 and was the longest reigning heavyweight champion in history, 11 years and eight months. So without going over his, his record again, um, you know, Joe Lewis, number two in my books. And brings us to number one, which is no surprise, the greatest, Muhammad Ali, 56 and 5, 37 KOs. Uh, and uh, in your words, what more can we say? Olympic gold medalist in 1960, three-time world heavyweight champion, 19 total defences over three reigns um, with epic wins over Sonny Liston, Joe Fraser, George Foreman, Ken Norton, you name it. He fought them and beat them. And that's why, in my opinion, he is the greatest of all time, number one fighter. So just to recap, number 10, Mike Tyson, number nine, Joe Fraser, eight, Evander Holyfield, seven, Lennox Lewis, six, Jack Dempsey, five, Jack Johnson, four, George Foreman, three, Larry Holmes, two, Joe Lewis, and one, Muhammad Ali. So there it is, guys. There's my uh, top 10. Um, we're going to try and get Mike going again here. If not, we can quickly run through them. I know how he, he wants to um, go through them himself, but we'll see how we go. So, Mike, can you hear us there? Yeah. More importantly, can you hear me? I can. You're a little bit yeah, low, we but can. we can we can make you out. I'm sure that's... That's enough. We can turn up the okay. volume if we have to on, on the replay. So we'll get into it before your dodo internet drops out again. And we'll start at number I 10. I think it's internet. I think it's my cell phone. Oh, okay. okay All, so right. All right, mate. Well, number 10. Number 10, Mike Tyson. I think you guys already touched on the reason why Tyson belongs on this list. Like Tazzy said, arguably could have been much higher. But mm. he, just, he was dominant for a three-year stretch and then never quite recaptured that form and was just lacking that one defining win. I know people talk about the defining night of his career when he erased Spinks in 91 seconds, but Spinks had been a light heavyweight world champion, moved to heavyweight. If he had done that, if Tyson had done the same to Lewis or to Holyfield, I think without question he's a top five heavyweight of all time, but he didn't. So... Yeah, deserve it of being on this list. A lot of people get confused and they rate Tyson in terms of most popular heavyweight of all time and he would mm. rank much higher. But when it comes to what he accomplished in the ring, I could only slot him in at number 10. Yep. Uh, number nine. Oh. Yep. The aforementioned Lennox Lewis. So, I mean, you guys already touched on this too. Lennox, absolutely lethal in rematches. A couple things that I think get forgotten with Lennox guys that were unlucky not to win versions of world titles. David Tua and Andrew Galotta, he respectfully demolished both of them in different ways. So Tua, he made look foolish for 12 rounds, absolutely boxed his head off. And people will say that Tua maybe wasn't himself or wasn't as aggressive as what he should have been. It's because Lennox shelled him up, you know, keeping mm. him at range with um, sharp, sharp jabs and then following up every time... Tua overstepped, solid right hand, dropping that on him. And 
and made him cautious. As for Galotta, one round drop to Galotta, who was coming off them two controversial losses to Riddick Bowe, both by DQ. So I think that you add that to his resume, then also beat three future world champions in... Um, he beat Briggs, he beat Frank Bruno, and then the last fight of his career beat Vitaly Klitschko. He retired at the perfect time, got out the perfect time, could have been higher on the list if he caught uh, Tyson at the right time, mm. if Bo would have fought him, but that was no fault of Lennox. Neither guy wanted a piece of him in the mid-90s. Yep. Number eight. The Rock, Rocky Marciano. And this is this is another one. I think on on record alone, people would argue that he should be ranked higher. But the quality of these wins, it's not that they're thin because he's got the two wins over Jersey Joe Walcott, two wins over Ezra Charles, the definitive knockout victory over Joe Lewis. But beyond that on his record, he's got, you know, his last fight of his career, stoppage over a relatively old Archie Moore, and then the couple wins over Roland Lestaza. And then beyond that, there's not much depth to his record. The one thing I'll say about The Rock, which is incredible what he was able to accomplish as a professional, only 13 amateur fights, nine wins, four losses, and then goes on to a 49-0 and professional career. So even though he's never beaten as a professional, he sure knew what it was to be defeated in the amateurs. I mean, nine and four, as you guys know, that's that's a pretty modest mark as an amateur. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, number seven. Yeah, the real deal with Evander Holyfield. And this is an interesting one because when Evander was still active in the late 90s, a lot of people in that era figured him to be a top five heavyweight of all time. And now I see that he slid out of how a lot of people stack him up in general. To me, I think Evander had very good stretches in his career and he was consistent over a period of time performing at an elite level, but he never put together like a four or five year run that you want to see in your top five heavyweights of all time. What I think is significant with Evander, for an undersized heavyweight, he was able to take it up, take it up to the biggest and the best. And since you guys covered so much of his reign, I'll say this. If you want to see Evander's quality as a heavyweight, go back and rewatch his fight with Mike Dokes, one of his early mm. fights after moving up from being unified cruiserweight world champion. It was his first Dokes one, wasn't was it? Mm. Uh, was it his first or his second? Oh, it was, was it? his second fight. Oh, okay. heavyweight. Yeah, I think uh, Pinklin Thomas was the first from Well, James Tillis, was it? Was it Tillis? It oh, might, it was one of them. Might have been yeah. yeah, it might have been. Yeah, actually, you're right. It was Tillis, Thomas, and then he had Dokes. But I thought that that was a significant fight to show his quality at the weight. You guys already touched on what he mm. accomplished. But yeah, he deserves to be ranked right there. All right, number six. <sighs> The legendary Jack Johnson. I think that what's significant with Jack is that he beat Sam Langford for the Coloured World title in 1906. But effectively, that's the heavyweight world championship. So in, in those times, you know, with the way things were in the United States, if you were African-American, you weren't going to get a look in at the heavyweight title. Like Tazzy said earlier, he chased... Um, he chased the heavyweight title all over the world, finally secured Tommy Burns in Australia, and the rest is history. The other thing significant on Jack Johnson's record outside of being a pioneer, in his defense, so before winning the world title, beat Bob Fitzsimmons, stoppage, as reigning world title, knocked out James J. Jeffries. He would be the only man in history that to that point in time had been had beaten 60% of all time reigning lineal world champions it's an incredible statistic mm. yeah i didn't know that all right mate number five oh i'm yep. on number five i'll click on him now wait for your graphic sorry mate number five we've got larry holmes i think that like you guys said greatest jab of all time reigned 1978 to 85 19 19 world title defenses now here's the thing with Holmes. like people will say that you know, he's never going to successfully follow Ali. So he come tough reign, tough era to follow. Only man ever to stop Ali for what it's worth. Beat four guys, Trevor Burbick, Tim Witherspoon, James James Smith, Mike Weaver. Four guys that went on to capture versions of the heavyweight world title. So that's significant to me, especially beating guys. I think Witherspoon was like 14-0 when he beat him. 
tough fight, but you've got to factor in guys like that. Like Marvis Fraser, I know people say Fraser was rushed in there, but Holmes destroyed him in a round. The Marvis Fraser never recaptured his form, never recaptured his confidence. But it's wins like that to me that made him such a defining champion. And like Pete was saying before, knew how to get back up off the floor. Go watch him against Ronaldo Snipes and against Ernie Shavers. It looked like he literally got sniped at him both of those fights. But he was gone, yeah. And 30 seconds after getting dropped was controlling the round. Mm. Most good. Most guys don't even get up from those shots, let alone come back to stop their opponents. Yep. Yeah, that's for sure. All right, mate. So, uh, number four. Jack Dempsey. So, I, I rate Dempsey this high for a number of reasons. I think that he was he was dominant in an era which was very slow. You know, at, at, at the height of, in the roaring 20s, it wasn't that you were going to be securing world title defenses every three months. It was a very slow period. Jack had other distractions. He was um, shacked up with Estelle Taylor, who was a Hollywood Hollywood starlet at the time. And that kind of shows his crossover popularity as well. So I think Jack could have been higher if a couple of things went differently. I think first and foremost, you look at his final bout of his career with Gene Tunney. Like Pete said, 14 second count, the long count. I believe Tunney was okay and he was just waiting for the referee to pick up the call. Significant that fight, first ever fight to have an enforced standing eight count where the fighter had to be sent to the neutral corner. Mm. Hence why he was still hovering in the middle of the ring, cost himself, you know, five, six seconds on the account. A couple mm. other things. First ever fighter, first $5 million gates in boxing history, all Jack Dempsey. Mm. Incredible. The fight that I just said about with Tony, the rematch, a near $2.7 million gate which is just outrageous for that time frame. Mm. Second last fight of his career, seventh round knockout over Jack uh, Jack Sharkey, future heavyweight world champion. So I think he's mm. deserved of being ranked this high. I know a lot of people might place him a little lower because they, they don't see so much depth in his title reign, but I think that there's enough there. Mm. Which brings us to a top three, mate, which is... Big George Foreman. I know you guys touched on a lot with George Foreman. A couple little statistics. 10-year hiatus, 1977 to 1987. When he announced that he was returning to fight, nobody took it seriously till, till probably the night where he fought Jerry Cooney and completely demolished Cooney. Mm. Then he erased Adelson Rodriguez, who was a top-tier heavyweight contender, in a couple rounds. I think that you know, form and adjusted his style, and then the rest is history. Longest ever period between heavyweight title reigns, 20 years. Get that again, 20 years between reigns when he knocked out Michael Moore in 1994. And something else, I don't think you guys mentioned this, uh, 1976 fight of the year with Ron Lyle, mm. one of the best five-round slice best you could ever watch. I think that Foreman's deserved to be at number three. I think he put Foreman down too, didn't he, Ron Lyle from Uri? Yeah, it was it was one of those few times. Whoever, mm. whoever landed strongest and last was going to win, and Foreman come out on top. He outlasted him. All right, which brings us to our top two. Slightly different order again to you guys. Might cause some controversy, but you would have known this from the top ten of last week. So Muhammad Ali at number two. Look, the resume speaks for itself. I think with Ali, when you go and study his record, what's significant is that early on in his career, he was always fighting top-tier fighters. I know occasionally he had guys that would be considered your tune-up types, but, you know, like fighting fighting guys like Lamar Clark in, you know, his first, I think it was his fourth or fifth fight, like he fought high-level fighters. He won his first world title against the Grain with Liston, four-to-one underdog. Uh, like you guys said earlier, I really think that that, that three-year hiatus in his career, he came back and needed to adjust his style. He lost three years of his prime. If he just misses the mark of being the greatest heavyweight of all time. Mm. All right, mate, which brings us to number one. Well, the man who Muhammad Ali said was the greatest heavyweight of all time. So if Ali said it, he's got to be there. The legendary <laughs> Joe Lewis. I think that when you look at Joe Lewis's reign, and we've already mentioned that the 25 title defenses, what I did this week, 
I didn't go back and start looking at the statistics because we already discussed it last week. I went back and just started watching the footage, re-watching the fights with Buddy Bear, with Max Bear, Tony Galanto, the Max Schnelling fight. I think Joe Lewis has the most lethal singular shot in heavyweight history, which is that short right hand. If you look at the way that he sets up that right hand, it's brutal. And there's, there's things that he does technically that you look at and we're watching fights here. These are 80 year old fights and the class of the man and the style and the skill that he's walking his opponents down still holds up today. And I think that that reflects what a living legend what a legend, an all-time legend of boxing, sorry, he is. Mm. I just think that you go watch Joe Lewis and you can see, like I said last week, you can see the transition from his era to modern boxing, whereas a lot of other fighters, other weight classes in the 30s and 40s don't quite bring that reflection as much as Joe Lewis. All right, mate. Well, there's your number 10. Just a quick recap. Yep. So we've got Mike Tyson, 10, Lennox Lewis, 9, Rocky Marciano, eight. Vander Holyfield, seven. Jack Johnson, six. Larry Holmes, five. Jack Dempsey, four. George Foreman, three. Muhammad Ali, two. Joe Lewis, number one. No, hard, hard to argue with there, mate. And I suppose just on all, on all the lists, um, look really hard to, to argue against any of them. Probably the only one, and I think... Taz and I had this sort of conversation the other day about uh, about Sonny Liston. I didn't obviously didn't have him in my list, and I probably went more on what he actually achieved rather than his persona and what he maybe could have achieved. I know I totally accept you know he was he was a, a beast of a man and very intimidating and had some some big wins. But I suppose I just sort of judged it on um, that he didn't really have many really significant wins when he won the title, and he obviously beat Floyd Patterson twice. And regardless of the circumstances, he lost to. Ali twice and never really went, you know, got back into the mix after that. So I, I must have been all sort of torn between him and maybe a Tyson or a Joe Fraser. And I, I just think that their body works a little bit more. But I'm happy to to hear your point of view there, Taz. You, you know, you know why, Lyndon? Because I didn't want him, mate. Mm. So, look, I don't want to be negative, but you guys have to admit because you're all smart guys in, in boxing. The mafia played a big part in boxing. Mm. All right. Yeah. Mafia played a massive part in boxing. Frankie Carbo and Blinky Palermo ran boxing back in the day. So mm. watch the Rage and Bull. Lamont didn't get a shot at Robertson or didn't get a shot against um the guy before he fought Robertson actually for the world title when he bet Mars Sosu down until he lost to a guy called Billy Fox at the front of the fight. Mm. Um they played a massive part. They didn't and like people didn't want Liston. Liston was um a bad black man with he used to hit coppers and used to be violent. They didn't want him to be champion. So once I got Ali, he was the most marketable field of all time. Besides mm. the Muslim part, you know, that's turned a lot of people off him. But I mean, this still went on about a 10, 12 fight win streak. Like, you know, he was a bad man, but they didn't want him. He wasn't, yeah. he was, he, no one loved him. No one, his own town. Yeah, you know, when he won the title, went back to his hometown. Not one person. He expected a parade. No one. Even the luggage handler didn't even say congratulations. Is there, but having him so high at number three, I just find it hard how hey, you could sort of see him above you know, some of those other fighters at number three. Yeah, it's, a per, it's a personal thing, totally agree. And you can yeah. probably, on record, you can probably pick me apart with it. Mm. I understand that. But I just I just think, like I said, it's hard to say. I just think he stole, he can beat anyone. I think he was too yeah. big and strong for Lewis even. Lewis is a greater fighter, but I think styles make fights. I think it was too big. And if Lewis got knocked down by... The guys used to get dropped by Galanto and, and mm. you know, people like Billy Connell boxed him early. Um, Walcott dropped him. I think Liston drops him and ends him. Mm. Um, I think it beats anyone except for probably a prime Ali. Destroys Tyson, destroys Fraser. This is only my opinion, guys. I've got a bit of a thing about Liston, but yep. look, as I said, sure, you can probably pick holes in me and I'll let you do it if you want. But I just think that's my opinion with Liston. Mm. Fair Sorry. enough. What do you reckon, Mike? Oh, no. Or Pete, whoever. Add, there's one guy we haven't mentioned, and for mine, I, I was going to put him in at 10, and that's Riddick Bowe. Mm. But we'll go back to that. I love Big Daddy. Go, he, yeah. he should have been three and zip against Holyfield. Mm. With that idiot yeah, yeah, that yeah. came through with a parachute, <laughs> landed yeah. him, fight stops for 25 minutes. Mm. Bowe was just about to do a number on, on Holyfield. That, that, yeah. They fought three yeah. times, mm. 25 minutes, was enough for 
for Holyfield to recapture a bit of his fitness, and then he, he came back on the top over the top and won classic the classic case of just just didn't reach his potential, wasn't he? Ability wise, had them all covered or most of them Amazing, covered. Amazing, mate. Mm. Pete, great the boy, line, mate. I think Bono. He, he, beats, he beats Tyson. He beats all of them. That's for me. Yeah, I thought he was a he can fight him close. Sort of show laws. He can fight him he close a for a big man. Jab. He was great. Yeah. Oh, he was beautiful. Aggressive. He had a silver medalist yeah. at the Olympics. Mm. He had everything. He's the guy that, ashamingly, I left out, but I just couldn't put him in because he didn't mm. have the promoter to get in those fights that he needed. I mean, but Tyson at the time was such a big draw cut. They avoided Bo so mm. badly because they know what would have happened if they put him in. Bo would have destroyed Tyson. Yeah, anyway, I have to agree. He's from the same hometown, Brownsville. To Tyson, from Brownsville. It wouldn't have been, wouldn't have been Clark. What? Holyfield did to Tyson would have been worse because that that's just my view anyway. I, I rated Bo someone that just didn't have that promoter and he couldn't promote mm. himself. But if he did, he definitely would have been in the top 10. Mm. And what do you think, you, Mikey? Yeah, and that you can take out, Mike? Yeah, well, I, I look at it like this. Bo threw, his, Bo threw his WBC world title in the trash can rather than fight Lennox Lewis. Mm -hmm. And when you're looking at things historically, and I'm not saying, look, Lewis beat him to capture gold at the 1988 Olympics. I'm not saying guaranteed Lewis beats him in the pros, but when you look at things historically, that's significant. And I feel like Lewis almost, when you look at him historically, gets punished by the fact that he never had those defining fights at the right time. Mm. You know, if Lewis got Bo in 93 when he wanted it, if he got Tyson in 96, again, Tyson, Tyson threw a world title in the trash can, mm. threw... The world title he won against Frank Bruno in 96, the WBC world title, Tyson threw it out rather than defend against Lennox. I think mm. that Lennox was deprived of that. And that's the hard thing when you're looking at things historically is there's certain marks that fighters could have reached, like we said with Ali. Those, those three years that Ali lost is significant. Mm. But you can only judge on the canvas that's in front of you. Yeah, And that's, that's why certain fighters are left out. I... The guy I felt bad to leave out was Joe Fraser. Mm. And it was like I was umming and ahhing between him and Tyson. And why the probably the reason why I left Fraser out was because one, Ali come back and beat him twice. I think that beyond Ali, there's a big drop in terms of the significance and the class of his victories. He beat the top contenders of the time, but he didn't beat other future Hall of Famers other than Bob Foster, mm. who was the light heavyweight world champion. Um, and then there was two significant KO losses to Foreman. So that can that contributes to Foreman's legacy, but it almost detracts a little bit from Frazier's. But I wouldn't argue anyone having Frazier anywhere from 8 to 10 because mm. the win against Ali alone is just about enough to put him there. Yeah, exactly. I'll, yeah, I, 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 I can't guys, argue with anyone's list, to be honest. I think the um, order's obviously changed a little bit, but I think overall... I think we didn't have that many different, to be honest. I think, um, I think Sonny Liston was probably one. And Rocky Marciano was probably the other one. I didn't have him in. He was probably my 11th one. And I know that's probably a bit of conjecture as well. But I just thought it was either him or Tyson or Fraser, I suppose, in, in the mix. And I just thought their body work was a little bit a bit uh, better. And I just think with Marciano, I mean, we all, we all love hey, Rocky. Yeah, we all love Rocky. But end of the day, his biggest wins were against really diminished fighters, I thought. He was just unlucky. He didn't have any really you know, fellow Hall of Fame type of fighters around that all the others did. And um, that was probably I, the end of the day. Why well, it was probably my 11th. For mine, I, Mike Tyson was my hero growing up. Anyone growing up in the 80s loved Mike. He just, hmm. But once you sort of grew up and then could see the game properly and you knew that he, the opponents I were picking for Mike, it was a bit like a, a Mayweather situation. He had brilliant... Hmm. Bill Clayton and Jacobs behind him, and they knew to pick guys. I remember when he fought Trevor Burbick, they said he was a guy that we we're going to pick on the way up. Mm. He was a perfect opponent, slow, not durable, not too much power, but tough. And then when he's got the heavyweight world title, it's like a two in one deal. So, mm. but where they say Tyson was at his best from 86 to 90 before he fought Douglas. Mm. Now, for mine, you know, he fought Tony Tucker, okay. Tough, durable, that was a tough 12 round fight. James Bone Crusher Smith in the last round clocked him and kind of went on to him. And Mike looked a bit confused and the bell went type mm. of thing. You thought, Bone Crusher, where was that? 
And Bone Crusher wouldn't be in my top 50. He's a great fighter. But for mine, when, when Tyson was struggling, say, up against Razor Ruddy and those type of guys, you knew really where he was at because each time he did step up and he got pounded early and he went to ground, he'd never win a fight. He never got off the canvas and won a fight. Yeah. And also the first Holyfield, the first Holyfield fight, Holyfield fought Bobby Ch- Bobby Chess. Mm. Holyfield came back from a heart operation. He looked average against Bobby Chess. I mean, Bobby Chess a light heavyweight, and they thought perfect. Now we get Holyfield, but you know, unfortunately for Mike, it was one of those situations where, again, it was a guy who was going to go twelve hard rounds, wasn't going to be intimidated, and Mike's good for the first four or five, but he got flattened. And, that's, I mean, it happened with Lewis as well. Each time Mike stepped up, he was fell short of the mark. Mm. He's a tough one, isn't Mike. he, Mike? Um, because he... I thought uh, he was an enigma. Yeah, because he was, as Mike. I said, he was a bit like Ali. We, we probably lost the best two or three years of his career he, when he, what happened. Because cause up until he, he beat Spinks, he, he literally cleaned out the entire division. No. And it was when he... When, I think the coincidence, or there's no coincidence that when he, he parted ways with Kevin Rooney and um, Caton and I know Jacobs died and all the rest of it, once he got away from that, that little inner circle, he was just never the same. Um, in, you could tell, tell he was never in, in, the, in the right frame of mind physically and mentally. Um, and I just don't think we ever saw the, the most... I don't really count the, the Lewis fight. Who knows what, what, what might have happened if they fought in the prime. But the time they fought, I think Tyson was 36, 37. He was only in it for the money. Um, but yeah. not to say that Lewis wouldn't beat him in the prime. I'm not saying that. But I just think we never got to really see the prime of Tyson. But at the time, the Tuckers and Picklin Thomases and the Tyrell Biggs and Carl Williams and, all, and Brunos, he literally cleaned out the division bar one fighter, and that was Tim Witherspoon. He's the only fighter of that generation that he didn't fight and beat. So well, it's probably one Ruddy of those instances Bowers where you can only beat then. who's in front of you, I suppose. Well, Ruddy Bow was around then. He was saying hello, but no yeah. one was talking on the other side of the phone. Yeah. What was happening there? Hey, boys, I'll tell you this. Anyone that's not a boxing person like us will have Tyson number one. Mm. Like any sort of non real proper, like intelligent boxing critic. Yeah. And he's seen all his knockouts and he's the baddest man. I mean, look, he's the baddest man until someone put up on his cheek. Quit a few times. So even by the Holyfield here, that's quitting. You know, you want to, that's not. Legit quitting, but it's quitting because you know if you do that, you're going to qualify. Look, so you get saved. When, when I mean, Mike Tyson, anyone that's not a boxing person. When yeah, Mike but, Tyson was at his best, or the bully that he was, mm. the referee had to pull him off opponents. Mm. The second time he fought Evander Holyfield, it goes over to Mills Lane. All he wanted to do was complain. Oh, he's head butting me. Mm. Oh, he's doing that. He's doing that. Mm. He, he was acting. Look. Holyfield said it. He goes, the first time we went in, he was given the attitude, the first fight. And mm. then I, I, I mastered that. I, I, I knew the second fight during the press conferences, the bully got bullied. Mm. And that was it. It was yeah. like Agreed. a schoolyard bully. Agreed. They come up hard at you. When you hit them, mm. you know, when you've got yeah. them conquered, they come, they want to be your friend. That was Mike Tyson, unfortunately. Mm. Classic bully. But at, no, but at his best, I mean, you had to be a certain type of fighter to beat him. And, mm. and the fighters that did beat him were very, I mean, you, Lewis, obviously Tyson was finished, but, you know, Buster Douglas wasn't finished when he knocked out Mike Tyson, mm. was he? I mean, you know, Evander yeah, Holyfield think, wasn't. Yeah. I think the Douglas fight was, you could probably excuse a little bit. He obviously wasn't there physically, mentally or whatever, but I mean, he, he lost it. But I think, you know, I've had plenty of fighters have been upset. Well, you look at, Lewis and McCall and Rahman and Ali with Norton. I mean, Norton was a great fighter, obviously. But I think, you know, Holmes with Spinks. I think um, the Douglas fight, yeah, I don't know. I, I, yeah, but I think we just can't, we, we can't, um, I suppose, argue that we, we just never saw the best of Mike. I think after he, bought, he beat Spinks, he was just never the same. Boy, boys, I've got, I've got a name. None of us have mentioned him. And I want to ask why no one put Klitschko. Klitschko, yeah. the most recent Klitschko of all the defences. None of us have got him on the list. Like, I think, I think a couple of things. I think that long-term reign. I think that the two-headed monster of him and Vitali reigning at the same time was counterproductive in that it wasn't just one of the brothers cleaning out the heavyweight division. They were kind of cleaning out different fighters. I think that. You know, Vlad might get respected more post-career. Let's see what, say, Joshua goes on to accomplish. 
let's see what Fury goes on to accomplish. I think what hurts Vlad is them early early R three knockout losses in his career mm. to Corey Sanders, to Lamont Brewster, and to Ross Purity. Mm. I think that all of those all of those losses are significant in how you view his legacy. He come back, he adjusted. He was more of a clutch and grab fighter in his reigns later, unless he could really clock eyes with a singular shot and get him out of there. He fought more to survive and was a little bit safety first. And I think that that's probably why he misses the mark. He, he's still probably a top 20 heavyweight of all time. Mm. But I think that that's probably oh. why you omit him. I think the thing that hurts him too is that his, his opposition around that time with no fault of his own was absolutely atrocious. I don't think the heavyweight division's ever been in a worse state of, and that's not his fault of course because he's a great fight or both of them are great hey, fighters, larry, but... larry larry donald larry donald wasn't great what are you larry talking Don- about <laughs> larry donald <laughs> larry donald yeah hey, uh, i think and it's not their fault but they just fight. they didn't have a fury around earlier you know or uh joshua or one of these guys unfortunately and it was not again it's not their fault but un- unfortunately they're a victim of, of the error they fought in yeah, boys. Right. Do you want to know why I didn't have Dempsey? You want to know why I didn't have Dempsey in my top ten? I didn't ever notice. Tell us. Because he refused to fight black fighters, mate. Which um, um, that's easy to say that. Sorry. Yeah, he refused to fight Harry Wills, who was the the top black fighter at the time. <laughs> and yeah, so you can. I mean, you didn't fight everyone then, did you? You, you claimed the race card um, to suit you at the time. So I think. He was great, obviously. Grew up hearing about him from my dad and grandfather. But once I went into him myself, I think, um, yeah, like refusing to fight the best black man at the time, that's pretty much doesn't do it for me. And um, knockout loss to Fireman Jimmy Flynn. And um, I know he was the first biggest gate earner and a celebrity and everything, but I don't think he holds up against the other heavyweights. Hmm. No, fair enough. Well, I think um, overall, I think our lists were very, very similar compared to, um, especially last week. Um, but I think uh, it's an arg- another argument. It's just opinions, and uh, you can view it in different in different ways. So, I think that's about it, boys. Thanks very much again. Uh, our format will change next week, so look out for what um, we're going to be doing our Thursday live show, and we'll, we'll have two other shows per week with dream fights and revisiting famous fights as well. So. So stay tuned. If you've uh, joined in tonight, thanks very much. And um, yeah, we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Tazzy. Thanks.